And I think there's a similar thing that's coming slowly, first from indies, in terms of systemic design, where eventually the the big companies are going to go, huh, yeah, the problem with systems is they always look terrible for the first 50, 60, 80 percent of their life, and then suddenly look amazing. And that's a real problem. And that's that's I think as much a our own inexperience in making these things. As we get better, that'll that'll be shortened down. But what you don't have is the, is the the content furnace, where you're just continually shoveling more and more content. So the reason a AAA game costs so much is because you've got to make you know so much content with an army of artists and designers and everything else. If you can cut that down, again, to go back to something like Slime Rancher or Stellaris or Crusader Kings, say, oh, I can do an awful lot more with a much smaller budget. The other thing that I think really significant, I think is going to catch on, people are going to start to understand this, uh, actually came out in one of Jason Rohrer's talks in 2019. I've talked about this before online, but uh, Life After the Indiepocalypse, I think, anyway. Yeah where he talks about if you have a game that is only a few hours long, so if it's on rails or it's a, you know, you have a set experience and it's four or five hours long, I'm only gonna be playing that game for that long. And I might be talking about it for a few days afterwards, but then I'm not. Whereas if I'm playing, you know, here we are talking about Slime Ranch, which came out how many years ago now? Yeah. You know, so you keep playing these games, which means there's much better word of mouth, better discovery and longer play time. And so you get a much longer, more sustainable revenue stream. So even from a business point of view, I think that as we figure out more about how to do systemic design well, it's going to make more and more sense. I think that's totally well-supported opinion. And actually, the, the Jason Rohrer talk, I think, is really interesting and important, where he basically, he kind of puts out the thesis saying, don't make consumable games, make situation generators. And I think from a budget perspective and for, for us as indies trying to kind of punch above our weight, it's design over the kind of content fire hose, right? It makes a lot of sense. Funny that we're talking so much about Slime Rancher. Nick Popovich <laughs> from Monomi Park gave a great talk as well, where yeah, he talks he about this retention model in the premium game, which I yeah. really did not, you know, I understand in these kind of freemium games and even on PC games like Dota or League, the, the idea of retaining people over long periods and the value of that because they have microtransactions. Slime Rancher does is not monetized through microtransactions. They did do a couple pieces of DLC and, and which were smaller things, but he makes a very convincing case that, you know, through the mechanics of Steam, you're seeing it popping up, that your friends are playing it, people are talking about it, maybe it's being streamed, it's just kind of present. And I think that kind of connects back to what Roar was saying about, he's kind of said, you know, do you play chess or are you a league or Dota player or versus right. have you played? I think he was using Edith Finch as an example, yeah. but other kind of narrative type games or consumable type games. To me, I mean, I'm convinced of this thesis. I'm also just, my orientation is not towards narrative and the game side. So I'm like, yeah, duh, but so, you know. Well, let, let's let's talk about narrative here in a second. But I want to make one, one other point yeah. on this. And that is that, the uncomfortable truth that indies typically don't want to recognize is that there are two sides to game development. One is all the design, programming, all that stuff, and their side is marketing. Yeah. And these should be equal in terms of the amount of effort you put in. And nobody wants to talk about that or like believe that that's true. As an indie, you can't put money into marketing. The only thing, and you can say, well, here's my game. I work really hard on it. Please play it, which is kind of what everyone tries to do. Now, some who are very smart, like you, do things like, oh, I'm going to do a bunch of devlogs. I'm going to put my pain out there for why is this not working? <laughs> but what you're doing along the way is getting people who are saying, oh, that looks pretty interesting. Oh, I want to be on this Discord. Yeah. So that there was a post about this recently about by doing all those things on day one on Steam, you've got several hundred to a thousand wish lists, which yeah. pops you up, which means you're going to get more people. Now, once you're on top, if you're not a content game, if you are a, a continue playing right. systemic game, right. You're gonna stay there for longer. So it's the way I believe the, the best way we have, the only way really that I know of, for indies to break out of the discoverability trap. Yeah. All that said, the downside is, like I said before, and we can talk more about this, I know you've experienced it, you're trying to make these systems work and they just don't. It's like, okay, I'm gonna make a thousand cakes and 700 of them are gonna be terrible. Yeah. And eventually I'll get one right. <laughs> oh, it's brutal. Yeah, I think that's a, I mean, this is, well, I love this as a segue. First, I think there's a couple things about indie games and marketing. This is a, a topic near and dear to my heart. Part of it is the moment in time. We're in a moment where we're, it's way more clear that just making a good game and getting platform support from a platform holder is not enough, right? That we're in right. a moment, I'm not gonna say we're in a moment of saturation, but we're in a moment where 
attention is important and having mechanisms for gathering attention is important, right? Getting your own traffic, getting your own attention. I mean, this is something I'm, my audience is probably tired of hearing it because I'm beating this drum, but I, I really believe it. And I think that actually to even zoom out of the game space, I think that this is actually the new mode just of literally doing business. We're in a systemic mode of disintermediation. Direct to consumer yeah. is the model and therefore counting on magazines or, I mean, look at the basically the death of the website as a force in games press, right? It's over. It's not yeah. relevant in terms of sales anymore. Culturally, sure. Is it important to have games criticism? Absolutely, right? But driver of sales, it's over, right? And I think this is the moment that we're in social, YouTube, Twitch, digital word of mouth is all that matters anymore. And TikTok, uh, I think is, is a big TikTok, one coming up. Exactly, yeah. huge. It's funny, that's another one I'm like hammering that, you know. <laughs> Oh, TikTok is a whole interesting, we can talk about TikTok, but like, you know, exactly that. I think that if you want to be a small business, you have to internalize that you're actually a media company and sorry if you don't like that, but that's the reality. That's the mode of business for the next, you know, there's, three years until the world changes again, you know? Yeah. Well, there's a great saying I love that I, I read back in the nineties. Um, I can't find the source for it, but it's in, in a time of abundance, the scarcest resources attention. Yeah. So we are in a time of abundance. And if you think about it, there have been, you know, more or less, let's call it 200 games that have come out on Steam in the last week. And 200 games a week before that, 200 games a week before that. How many of those have you played? Yeah. This is something every indie developer should, should ask themselves. We're all trying to balance, you know, some of our day jobs, our development yeah. with playing games. And yet there are all these games that have come out that are, that are people put their hearts and souls into and that disappear beneath the waves. Yeah. And the only way to avoid that is the kind of things we've been talking about. Yeah. Um, but it's it's hard. And this is something, you know, I try and drum into my students and, and you know, they'd rather do Jira, honestly. I mean, no one likes Jira. At least, uh, sorry, Jira people. I <laughs> sorry, producers. Fans out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, really, they, they I was going to say root canal, but not at all. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. they, you know, the, the marketing is just not something that comes naturally to most or comfortably to most most developers, most indie developers. Yeah. The other thing I was going to say, just this sort of maybe gets us a little back to the narrative touch point I dropped yeah. in there.